1995, they released World Premiere Cartoons, or What a Cartoon, which shows many different shorts that would become so popular they would get their own series on Cartoon Network. One of them was Dexter's Laboratory. It's about this boy genius named Dexter who lives with his mom, dad, and her idiotic sister who has a secret laboratory in his closet. There are also other segments of the show, like Dial M for Monkey, that's about Dexter's superpowered monkey, The Justice Friends, where three superheroes live in an apartment like a sitcom, and TV Puppet Pals, which is the show within the show, just like Itchy and Scratchy. By the way, how big is that laboratory anyways? Is there this giant part of his house that Dexter's parents don't know about, or just ignore it all the way? Anyways, it all began when Jendi Tartakovsky was doing some drawings, and then he drew a ballerina. But it wasn't any random ballerina. It was a cartoony, tall, and very skinny ballerina. So he also drew this very short, literally square dude next to the ballerina. So, in short, the whole series began with a drawing of Dee Dee. Some of the people who did this show would later on make other famous cartoon series, like Rob Renzetti, who would make My Life as a Teenage Robot, Butch Hardman, who would make The Fairly Odd Parents and Danny Phantom, and Seth MacFarlane, who would make American Dad, The Cleveland Show, and Family Guy. Dexter's Lab made its debut on world premiere cartoons on February 20th, 1995, and his own show began on March 1996. It went on until 1999 with possibly the most epic finale, Last But Not Beast. The next year, they released a TV special called Dexter's Lab Ego Trip, which was made by Tartakovsky and it won an Annie. In 2001, the show was re-aired on Cartoon Network, but this time, it had a totally different cast and crew. Mainly because many of the head people were either too busy doing other shows, like Tartakovsky was busy making Samurai Jack and Star Wars Clone Wars, and Hartman and McFarlane left Hanna-Barbera to make their own shows. They even changed Dexter's voice from Christine Cavanaugh to Candy Millo. In 2002, they released a CD called Dexter's Lab, the Hip Hop Experiment, with songs from different hip hop artists like Prince Paul, Will I Am, and Coolio about the show. Speaking of which, it didn't really do well than it did in the late 90s and ended in 2003. Another show that started in world premiere cartoons was Johnny Bravo. It's about this really hunky dude who is more brawn than brain and has zero chance on scoring a girl. Story of my life. Anyways, it all started when Van Partible made an animated short called Meso Blues that's about this Elvis impersonator for the Loyola Marymount University. He showed it to his animation professor, and then the professor showed it to a friend of his who worked at Hanna-Barbera. The company liked it so much that they hired Partible to make another short like Meso Blues for their world premiere cartoons. After that, he went into the company with Jandy Tartakovsky, Craig McCracken, the creator of the Powerpuff Girls, and Paul Ruddish, the designer of the show. Another person that came in that was fresh out of college was Seth MacFarlane. In there, Van made a lot of changes to his character from Meso Blues. He gave him more of a 50s look, his hair was based on Brad Pitt's hairdo from Johnny Suede, he gave the character the name Johnny Bravo because in an episode of The Brady Bunch, Greg was cited as the next Johnny Bravo, and his physical appearance and personality was based on a British personal trainer called Shane Dickens. The Johnny Bravo short was aired on the world premiere cartoons on March 26, 1995, and the show itself was released on July 7, 1997. For the show, they got most of the crew from world premiere cartoons and got Joe Barbera as the mentor of the show. Also, there were special guest stars that would appear in the show, like Don Knotts, Jessica Biel, Farrah Fawcett, Weird Al Yankovic, 
Richard Simmons, Adam West, Mick Jagger, Seth Green, Mr. T, Shaquille O'Neal, Donny Osmond, Mark Hamill. Holy crap, they got celebrities popping out of everywhere! Oh, by the way, on the episode Johnny Bravo meets Adam West, West was so kooky in there that Seth MacFarlane, who also wrote the episode, added that character in Family Guy as Mayor Adam West. There were also some classic Hanna-Barbera characters that appeared in the show, like the cast of Scooby-Doo, Huckleberry Hound, the Blue Falcon, Yogi Bear, and Fred Flintstone. After the first season was done, the show was in hiatus until out of nowhere, in 1999, they released the second season, and it changed a lot. There were many characters got redesigned, like Little Susie, added new characters like Carl, and changed the style of humor. Many of their viewers either hate the changes they made, or like the new slapstick style it has. This went on until the end of the third season in 2002, which after has another hiatus, then got picked up again in 2004 where they went back to the old style of humor they had in the first season. But then the show officially ended late that year. After it was cancelled, there was a race car in the 2005 Sharpie 500 NASCAR race, the number 5 Kellogg Chevrolet to be exact, that has Johnny Bravo literally on the hood. Even though the show ended, it seems that Johnny became a 90s icon. Even Butch Hardman and Seth MacFarlane think that Johnny Bravo is a cult hit. Now, world premiere cartoons did spun off many TV shows for Cartoon Network, but my personal favorite out of all of them was Cow and Chicken. The premise is about a common family where a cow and a chicken are the kids, and the mom and the dad are just a pair of legs that can talk. Seriously, we never see their upper body or have an upper body. The only time that ever happened was a dream I had a long time ago. This weird idea began when Hanna-Barbera animator David Face made up a bedtime story for his daughter. One day, during his work, David was called to see Larry Huber, the executive producer of What a Cartoon, remember that's the other title for world premiere cartoons, and gave him ideas for shorts. So Feist gave Huber three ideas and one of them was Cow and Chicken. Eventually, that became a cartoon and was released in 1995, and man was it a success! It got nominated for an Emmy for Best Animated Short, and there were tons of fan mail asking to make more Cow and Chicken cartoons. Instead, they decided to make a series out of it and released it on July 15, 1997. During the show, there would be a segment called I Am Weasel, which is like the twisted version of the nursery rhyme Pop Goes the Weasel, but with a baboon called I Are Baboon, and the red guy, who is also in Cow and Chicken. The segment was later on given its own series, like how Pinky and the Brain got its series from Animaniacs. Voice actor Charlie Adler was considered to be like Mel Blanc for this series, mainly because he does the voice of Cow, Chicken, The Red Guy, and I Are Baboon from I Am Weasel. Other notable actors in this are Tom Kenny, the voice of Spongebob and a bajillion others, Dee Baker, who did number 4 in Codename Kids Next Door, Dan Castellanella, the voice of Homer Simpson, and oddly enough, Will Ferrell. There's actually a band episode called Buffalo Gals that's about this lesbian biker group that randomly breaks into people's houses and chews on their own carpet. Take it any way you want, but whatever you do, don't ask. Anyways, they aired it once, but then they banned it because 1. There's lesbians in it, and 2. There's stereotypical lesbians in it. The show kept on going until 1999, with four seasons, with 52 episodes. The last cartoon that Hanna-Barbera made for What a Cartoon that would become its own series was The Powerpuff Girls. It's about... Wait, you know what? Let's have Tom Kenny explain what it is. Sugar. Spice. And everything nice. These were the ingredients chosen to create the perfect little girl. But Professor Utonium accidentally added an extra ingredient to the concoction. Chemical X. 
Thus, the Powerpuff Girls were born! Using their ultra superpowers, Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup have dedicated their lives to fighting crime and the forces of evil! Yeah, something like that. The show all began in 1992, where a student at Cal Arts called Craig McCracken made a short called The Whoopass Girls. Why Whoopass? Well, let's just say instead of Chemical X being one of the ingredients, it's actually a can of whoop-ass. And no, they don't look like major ass-kickers. They're the same giant-headed, no-nose, no-fingers, bug-eyed little girls that we all know. Two years later, the Spike and Mike Sick and Twisted Festival of Animation decided to put the first short, The Whoop-Ass Girls, a sticky situation, in their festival. Later, while working on Dexter's Lab, he submitted the short to air on What a Cartoon, which eventually aired in 1995, but changed the title into The Powerpuff Girls in Neat Fuzzy Lumpkins. A year later, they released a second short called Crime 101. But then in 1997, Ernie Anderson, the narrator of the shorts, passed away of cancer. He would be replaced by Tom Kenny for the show. Speaking of the show, when it aired on November 18, 1998, it was a giant success! It was Cartoon Network's highest rating premiere of its history, and it attracted many audiences from far and wide, big and small. Many say that the show was more reminiscent to the classic cartoons like Yogi Bear and the Flintstones because of the low quality animation that looks like the limited animation used before. It got many awards like two Emmys with five nominations, two Annies with nine nominations, and got nominated for a Blimp Award. By 2001, there was so many Powerpuff Girls merchandising everywhere and getting bought everywhere, even Craig McCracken never expected to be this popular. In 2002, they released a Powerpuff Girls movie in which it's a prequel that explains of the origins of the girls. Even though it got some good reviews from the critics, it was an atom bomb at the box office with more than $16 million worldwide. The series would go on until March 25, 2005, when it was finally over. A year later, over in Japan, there was, and try to believe me on this, an anime version of the show called Demashita Powerpuff Girls Z. I know, I couldn't even believe it either when I first saw its opening credits. The show was actually more different than the original show in about every single way on January 29th, 2009, as part of the Powerpuff Girls' 10th Anniversary Marathon on Cartoon Network, Craig McCracken released a new half-hour special made entirely out of Adobe Flash. Meanwhile, back onto Hanna-Barbera, in 1996, Turner and Time Warner Inc. had made a merge. This means now they own two animation studios, Hanna-Barbera and Warner Brothers Animation. But that was until 1998, where the Hanna-Barbera Studios was closed down and moved to Warner Brothers Animation. On March 22, 2001, William Hanna passed away, along with the Hanna-Barbera name, when it got completely absorbed into Warner Brothers Animation, and the straight-to-video movie Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase was dedicated to Hanna. The recent cartoons they were making are now completely made by Cartoon Network Studios. Meanwhile, Joseph Barbera would still work at Warner Brothers Animation by making some Tom and Jerry shorts until his death on December 18th, 2006. And thus ends the history of Hanna-Barbera.